Morocco, located in northern Africa, is a land that fuses the styles of Europe and the Sub-Sahara, with major landmarks ranging from Grand Roman ruins to orange-toned mud-brick Casbah architecture, and from the Medinas of Marrakesh to the Atlantic beaches makes it one of North Africa's most interesting destinations. So here's a look at the best places to visit in Morocco. Number 1. Marrakesh Located north of the foothills of the Atlas Mountains, Marrakesh is a bustling city with a large medina. Marrakesh's walled old town is an indecipherable labyrinth of alleys converging in the west on the Jima El Fna Square under the emblematic 12th century minaret of the Qutubia Mosque. The Qutubia Mosque with its 77-meter minaret is the city's largest mosque and has towered above the west side of the medina for more than 800 years. Access is prohibited to non-Muslims, but you can get a good look from the esplanade and to the right you'll see the ruins of an earlier Almohad Mosque, raised in the 12th century but abandoned because its shrine wasn't oriented towards Mecca. Up there with the masterworks of Moroccan architecture, Bahia Palace is an intensely decorated palace on 8 hectares in the southeast of the median build in the 1860s, later extended with a gigantic harem on a courtyard around a central basin. The complex abounds with painted cedar and beach ceilings, gleaming white marble, stained glass and gardens filled with jasmine, hibiscus, citrus and banana trees. Moving on to number 2, Casablanca. Morocco's main port and the largest city in the Maghreb, Casablanca is a multicultural financial center known more for its modern construction than its history. Built on a peninsula above the ocean, the Hassan II Mosque is Africa's largest mosque and the third largest in the world. The mosque was consecrated in 1993 after less than eight years of construction and has a capacity of 105,000 worshippers. Its minaret is the world's second tallest at 210 meters with a laser beam pointing towards Mecca. The mosque was built with exquisite craftsmanship in its marble columns, horseshoe arches, chandeliers and wood carvings all produced by 6,000 craftsmen from all around Morocco. While Medinas and other Moroccan cities can be traced back hundreds of years, Casablanca's old walled city is surprisingly young. The benefit upshot is that this almost indecipherable district of scruffy intertwining streets holds less tourist appeal than its counterparts in Marrakesh and Fez, but merits a daytime visit for anyone who wants to see the real Casablanca. Number 3. Tangier. Tangier became famous in the mid-20th century as the destination for the European and American literary set. The major attraction is Tangier's Medina where the winding alleys hold small museums and restored mansions, historic monuments and souks. The maze-like Medina of the White City spills down the slope from the Casbah in the north, granting brief glimpses of the Bay of Tangier through its gorge-like alleys. For non-Muslims, the Grand Mosque is a sight to check out as you make your way around. The Grand Mosque is the largest in the city, raised in 1685 on the foundations of a demolished Portuguese church. The mosque took on its current appearance in 1815 under Sultan Malay Sliman. Some other must-visits within day-tripping distance include exploring the Roman ruins of Lixus, the Sifra panoramas at Cap Spartel, and visiting the Mediterranean coast's Spanish enclave of Ceuta. Number 4. Agadir where the western ridge of the High Atlas Mountains drops to the Atlantic, Agadir is a port and beach resort with year-round sun. And if you want to mix up sunbathing with some sightseeing, Agadir is also a good jump-off point for day trips to the towns of the Sus Valley and anti-Atlas regions. Agadir's central market is on a massive scale covering more than 32,000 acres and employing 10,000 people, which makes it one of the largest in Morocco. It was built like a fortress following the city's destructive earthquake in 1960, and has been updated over the last couple of decades with a roof and new flooring. The ruins of Agadir's citadel or Kasbah dating back to 1572 are hoisted far above the ocean up the sharp slopes of a 300-meter hill. At the top, only the restored outer walls is still standing, following the earthquake that raised the city in 1960 but the view all the way down to the Bay of Agadir is mesmerizing. Number 5. Rabat As Morocco's capital, Rabat is home to the country's most important museum, the Royal Palace and the Mausoleum of Muhammad V, as well as several historical attractions. The Hassan Tower, 
an incomplete 44-meter red sandstone minaret was erected in the late 12th century for a humongous mosque that would have held 20,000 worshippers. But construction was abandoned after the third caliph of the Almohad Caliphate Al-Mansur died. What's left of the mosque further damaged by the 1755 Lisbon earthquake can be seen in the 348 regimented cylindrical stone columns in front. Facing off from the Hassan Tower is one of Morocco's most venerated shrines as the tomb of the ruler who guided the nation into independence. Unusually the mausoleum of Muhammad V is open to non-Muslims, and was built in the 1960s to a design by a Vietnamese architect. There's a marble floor, vibrant zealot walls and an incredibly detailed ceiling of carved cedar painted with golf leaf and crowned with a dome with stained glass windows, and you can view Muhammad V's tomb from a gallery above. Now, before you plan your next trip to Morocco make sure to check out the first link in the description where you can find the best deals for your flight, hotel and car rentals in Morocco. Moving on to number 6, Fez. Fez was founded on the banks of the Javhar River in the 8th century by Idris, a descendant of the Islamic prophet Muhammad, and is the country's spiritual capital and one of the best places to soak up the historic ambience of Morocco's imperial cities. Founded in the middle of the 14th century the Buainania Madrasa is a feast for the eyes, with every inch of the courtyard filled with exquisite craftsmanship. The ablution fountain in the courtyard continues to flow after more than 750 years. Standing here it's hard not to be astonished by the geometrical tilework topped with bands of Arabic calligraphy, the feather light stucco work and the carved cedar screens. Jardin Nan Spill is the oldest park in the city. Landscaped in the 18th century it's a rare patch of green space with a large pond and water gardens where geometric fountains are festooned with zellage tiles, all bordered by geometric beds of roses, cactuses and low boxwood hedges. Number 7. Marzuga Located in a secluded spot not far from the Algerian border, the small village of Marzuga now makes for a popular base from which to explore the delights of the Sahara Desert. Towering over it are the enormous dunes of Erg Chebbi, which in some places reach over 300 meters in height. Lac de Itz Ridge, a seasonal lake four kilometers west of Merzuga dries out in the summer but is replenished by the autumn rains. As a giant blue sheet against the desert dunes, the lake would be photogenic under any circumstances, but is all more incredible for its profuse bird life. More than 30 different species have been spotted on the lake's shores, from pipits to shell ducks, sandpipers, plovers, wagtails and storks. But the stars are the greater flamingos which are best seen around March and April. Number 8. Meknes Often referred to by its official UNESCO name, the historic city of Meknes is a stopover on the route from Rabat on the coast to Fez under the rises of the Atlas Mountains. It's a great place to wonder at the country's fusion of Spanish and Moorish styles. In Meknes the architecture of the Medina, the grandiose gateway of Bab el Mansur, and the dazzling mausoleum of Malay Ismail are three of the major attractions. This is also the closest base to the hilltop pilgrimage town of Malay Idris, one of the region's most beautiful villages. Bab al Mansur is the main gate between Meknes Medina and the imperial city districts. It's an immense and finely detailed structure that many architectural experts proclaim to be one of North Africa's finest examples of surviving gateways. Finished in 1732, the intricate architectural detail on the gateway includes lavish use of zellage tiling and stone carving work. Number 9. Essaouira In the 19th century the walled coastal city of Essaouira was Morocco's main seaport, connecting trade routes through its Saharan hinterland with the rest of the world. Defended from the ocean by the long 18th century ramparts, Essaouira's Medina is a fortified town with European military architecture in a Maghreb context. This has earned it UNESCO World Heritage status, not least for the many reminders of how multicultural life was on these tight twisting streets after their regeneration by Mohammed ben Abdullah. Berbers, Arabs, Europeans and Africans lived side by side, and the large Jewish quarter has two cemeteries and a couple of synagogues you can visit. One of Essaouira's defining images is the fortified gate that opens onto the Scala du Port. This Baroque structure, with a frieze, pediment, scrolls and fluted pillars, was built in 1770 by the renegade architect Ahmed Elinglisi. 
The Scala du Port is a long embattled artillery platform built in the style of a Vauban fortification in 1769. The platform protects the harbor with two 200-meter platforms, leading from the Bab el Marsa gate east of the tower, and then south to the circular Borge el Barmil bastion. The tower can be scaled for a complete view of the ramparts and the port with its cluster of blue wooden boats. Number 10. Chefchaouen. Set amidst the Rif Mountains, Chefchaouen is known as the Blue Pearl of Morocco because of its fantastic blue houses and streets. Jewish immigrants painted the houses blue and people have been guessing for years as to why. It is this mystery that gives the city its charm and makes it a long-standing popular tourist destination. The Spanish Mosque is a beautiful building that sits isolated on a hill above the city. The mosque was built in the 1920s but it was never actually used and now sits abandoned looking out across the city. It is an easy 30-minute hike to the top where you will be rewarded with incredible views. In the main square sits the Kasbah, an old Moroccan fort. This building has served many purposes through the ages but now it's an ethnographic museum and art gallery. Inside you can learn about the fascinating history of this area through the ancient artifacts, clothing, instruments and traditional decorations and crafts on display. Now, if you are still not sure where to take your next trip make sure to watch the travel guides that will show up right about now.